with his voice quivering and tears filling his eyes. Mustaq Faisal said he had no choice but to leave Pakistan. My life is full of challenges. Muslim neighbors accused the young Christian of tearing pages from the Quran, so they wanted his family killed. I was so scared. I told them I would never do anything like that to their holy book, but they didn't believe me. Fearing for their lives, Faisal took his wife Samina, son Joshua, and fled to Thailand with hopes of starting a new life free from Islamic death threats. The moment we arrived in Thailand, I submitted our asylum application with the UN. But six months after arriving in country, Faisal still had not heard back from the UN's agency responsible for protecting refugees. And with the family's three-month tourist visa expired, the Thai government sent immigration police after them. I was not at home when the Thai police came to our apartment. My wife told them she was a heart patient and that they should not arrest her, but they didn't listen. Under Thai law, any refugee who overstays their tourist visa is illegally in country. The arrested, like Samina, are taken in caged vans to an immigration detention center, or IDC. She was okay for the first three days, but then she got very ill on December 20th. Faisal pleaded with the UN to help his sick wife. I kept asking, I kept crying, but they did not listen to me. He begged detention guards to give her heart medications. I told him that if you don't do anything, she will die. The name Jesus Christ. Wilson Chowdhury, a Christian human rights advocate, tried to intervene, but wasn't too hopeful based on past experience. And what we found is that uh, the wardens protecting, meant to be protecting these detainees, deny them access to health care and medicines. His group and others obtained images showing inhumane conditions inside the IDC facility, including of men chained like dogs. The stench as you walk in is overpowering. Um, the toilets, are, uh, uh, there are two toilets to serve over 200 people. And in some cases, 200 people crammed in rooms that barely fit 100. So they're sleeping one on top of each other, or they'll be sleeping crouching or standing up. On December 30th, 2015, the UN finally responded to Faisal, but with news that his wife Samina had died. My life is so terrible right now. We face so many difficulties in Pakistan, and that's why we escaped to Thailand. Now I'm here, and my wife is dead. What am I supposed to do? My son keeps asking, where is mommy? But I don't have the courage to tell him the truth. Six other Pakistani Christian refugees have died in Thai detention centers. More than 100,000 Pakistanis have fled their homeland because of rising Islamic violence. Reports say nearly 11,000 are in Thailand, many of them Christians. The problem is the government here doesn't want any refugees from anywhere. And since Thailand is not a signatory to a UN agreement on asylum seekers, folks like George Naz face a precarious future. We were treated as second-class citizens in Pakistan. Now we come here and we face similar conditions. Naz is a wanted man in Pakistan. In 2013, he was accused of blasphemy by an Islamic court, but escaped to Thailand. For now, he hides and waits and illegal, with no right to work, no access to schools or hospitals. I'm scared to go outside my building because the immigration police or army can arrest me at any moment. CBN News visited a housing complex in Bangkok where scores of Pakistani Christian families are crammed into small apartments, many living illegally. For example, we live in one room with four other families. Our kids cannot go to school because they are also considered illegal. So the whole day, we just sit at home. For a few hours on Sunday morning, a handful of Pakistani Christian families brave arrest <laughs> to attend the secret church service. Stranded in Thailand for years, <laughs> many hear hope and pray for designated UN refugee status and eventually the chance to settle in a third country. 
In the meantime, a few Christian NGOs are helping them and others with food and living expenses. But the needs are overwhelming. For now, though, Paisal clings to the one thing he knows will bring comfort. He reads verses from Psalm 121, reminding his son Joshua that it is God who will take care of all their needs. I trust in God. Only God can help us in our time of difficulties. George Thomas, CBN News, Bangkok, Thailand.